A I tech tech, uh, Gecko. Is it a little mini tech tech? He has a tech tech. I think the death of the our little boat gecko was kind of the start of something. Tail wiggling around. Sometimes he falls off the ceiling onto my computer. Yeah, I mean, the death of, of someone of a pet can be sad, even though it was a temporary pet. But I think it 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 started something in my mind. I get really affected by bad things happening, and that was definitely one of those things. You can laugh, but I think the death of the little boat gecko affected me. That was also around the same time where, on the other side of the planet, we, you know, were reading news about 700 migrants on a on a boat going down and and dying possibly. It was also around the same time that, uh, famously, that Titanic sub uh, imploded, and at the time we didn't we didn't know that it imploded. I mean, it's in the realm of our subject matter. You know, we're constantly thinking about boat safety, water safety, ocean safety. You may think it's kind of silly that I'm affected by something on the other side of the planet or on the other side of the ocean of people experiencing tragedy. But for me to envision myself in a really traumatic scenario in both cases, you know, yeah. I get that. It, it was a sad story. It also led us to have lots of discussion about it. We're discussing about there are things, certain ways to do things on boats and on the sea, and we always hear people trying to take shortcuts, trying like rigging, engine. We always, you know, use yeah. the word jerry rig. Jerry rigging. And things. I don't think the ocean is very tolerable and accepting of, of jerry rigging things. There are certain ways to do things on boats and time tested. Time tested ways, yeah. and if you kind of stray away from those. I mean, innovation on a boat, on boats, is a good thing, but... I mean, we jury-rig a ton of things on our boat. I mean, the whole channel is about <laughs> our being forced to jury-rig, and you will see some jury-rigging uh, yeah, I mean, in today's episode. You know, we could have, you know, bought cheap cables for our mast and, and put, mm, what you call, nico presses or clamps, like some people would like to do, but, you know, even we that... Could have, we could have glued things where instead we should have epoxied them with the right epoxy or yeah. we, we should have made something thicker and we didn't make it thicker. Our philosophy is to build as strong as possible in all cases and all circumstances as best as we can. And so I think a lot of this psychology was affecting me. And even then the things go weeks. bad. When, even when everything is perfect, shit goes bad. So imagine yeah. when. When you have all the resources at your fingertips, you should use all those resources. And when you don't have all those resources, you do the best as you possibly can. And yeah, that's, I mean, that's our philosophy. Also in the last couple of weeks, we've been having, of course, many heat wave. Uh, places experiencing a lot of heat wave activity. You've had tremendous heat and humidity beyond. As much as it's normal here in Mexico to have a lot of heat, it's been really, I mean, we've been what really now, hot. six years in Mexico, we're in the Sea of Cortez, which is pretty hot, but this was a whole new level. I mean, yeah, we're experiencing it's difficult to like breathe heat. and get out of bed and do anything actually. Yeah, it's you, you sit in front, you sit in the shade and 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 beg for it to go away. I, we were trying to go get water for our water tank and trying to go get drinkable water. We were just trekking around town and 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 the fuel dogs trying to get water, and I started to get what I thought were symptoms of heat stroke, and. I really thought there was something wrong, you know. I, I, I was really thirsty. I think a combination thirsty. of stress, too much caffeine. I think the strong tea and the cold coke were too much caffeine for yeah, you. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't have any water. We didn't have a drop of water, drinking water, left on the boat, unfortunately, that morning. And I really thought there was something wrong with me. I was having heart palpitations. I was, uh, I felt like I was going to pass out. My chest was, was like scrunching in my stomach. I, I felt like I was having a heart attack. And luckily, the, at the, on the island here, the doctors and the nurses at the ER took a look at me and there was absolutely nothing wrong. I wasn't experiencing heat stroke or heart attack or anything like that. And I was having a, pa a panic attack, apparently. Yeah, it was the culmination of all these things together. When anchored here, you must be prepared at all times to receive at least 35 plus knots of wind. What do you know, another storm. Squalls rolled through the anchorage daily.
Usually I would take a shower, but there's lots of lightning. On a completely different note, but relating to the rest of this video, we've always had trouble with self-steering on all the boats we've been on. I mean, that's kind of yeah. a running theme on this channel, whether it's our boat or other people's boats. Here's we, our self-steering right there. Yeah, just... <laughs> Yeah, you may remember back when we were on my way, we tried to build a, a wind vane. We ended up trashing that project because we ended up selling my way. And for, I would say about six or seven months, we did have a working tiller steering on, on Rosa. So we're trying to change that. We're trying to get a wind vane set up here on the boat. You grew up with this, this old Aries yeah. wind vane for half of your, your childhood. Your inheritance finally came through. You can through. say old, old, old Vintas. <laughs> off of old Vintas. Robbie returned from town with it off of uh, Vintas. And he brought with him this monstrosity bag full of goodies. Let's see what's inside. Vein. This is the bottom. That much I know. It's really heavy. So we can't see the crack. It's just, this has been fiberglassed and then... You can see, this one has a crack here on this side. You can see a crack there. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. Basically, deal with both sides. First, we would need to seriously decrest the bimetallic corrosion. It's a very beautiful, cloudy sunset, but I've been wondering all afternoon if it's gonna hit us. Big anvil-shaped cloud. To mount the wind vane on the transom, we would need two long enough pipes of the correct diameter. So one long stainless steel pipe of the incorrect diameter that we'd been carrying around in the bilge for years would have to do. Thus began the unnecessarily tedious and unpleasant task of fiberglassing sleeves onto the ends and then hand sanding down everything to fit. It's of course hard to get fiberglass and epoxy to stick well for a long time to metal. So I made an attempt to prep the stainless for its new sleeves. We're not in the boatyard anymore. It's a small cockpit set up for epoxy jobs now. I did my best not to get it all over everything. I think I succeeded in keeping things clean here, but later on, well, that was a bit of a disaster. With a cold brew Jamaica drink break in between, and then it was back to work. The following day. So what happened, Justine? Too much? Too much fiberglass. Too much fiberglass, we were worried it wasn't gonna fit, and now... 
overdid it a bit. You overdid it a bit, huh? Although I measured the amount of fiberglass needed with the caliper, I ended up making the fiberglass and epoxy much too thick. Yeah, I think uh, we're gonna f take those things to shore. I think once you get the first one in, I think I'm gonna make you stop. And sanding down those nine extra millimeters was more frustrating than sanding down the entire bottom of my hull, I think. Oh yeah, she loves when Taffy's hands is there and falls asleep on Taffy's hands. Oh yeah, Taffy. Justin is busy. We got all the pizza. Solo ovens going. We made us some caramelized onion and tomato focaccia. Ready. We had to get all the moving parts of the Aries to budge somehow. We started with plain old oil to try and loosen up the moving parts, but they remained pretty stiff. Freeing the big central pin seemed key to servicing both the top and the bottom bits without having to disassemble everything and risk cracking the frame some more. Get rid of this pin, then what? Then I'm gonna be able to like lift this. You can, of, you can. This will come out of the way, and I'll be able to push the shaft out. That means I can really clean the inside well. Silicone spray helped to loosen up the pin. Come on, we did that without breaking. The question is, why is it not? popping off because I don't think it's gonna come out from the top with the thing in the way. The bottom leg was the part that needed to move most freely and smoothly but it was also the part that was the most stuck. I don't need to hammer anymore. It comes out like this. This stainless steel bar within an aluminum tube separated by Teflon bushings were all stuck together extremely well. And that, Pull. Was, that was supposed to be smooth. <laughs> yeah, this is supposed to be the smoothest part of, of, the, of the mechanism, it's like not. It was time for the daily afternoon squall. Our neighbors are dragging. At least their anchor, I mean, at least their engine seems to be working. They keep on bringing up and down the... Uh, Let me stop the fridge. I did. Maybe we should start our engine. Um, if you feel that it's a good idea. Maybe if they're dragging a lot, we should start the engine. We were working on the wind vane, trying to get that ready, and suddenly this kind of came out of nowhere, even though the sky was looking really unsettled all day. We've got the engine on. That's the horrible noise, but just just in case. Our neighbors, we've been watching them trying to reset their anchor. I was floating and I'm like, maybe they're going, hmm, they're going, they're going, they're gone. <laughs> but they're having a hard time because there's something on their anchor. There's a rope wrapped around the anchor, I can see. I don't know if they can see that. I'm sure they've noticed that. They're, they're having, not even trying to re-echo. Yeah, they're just motoring face into it for the time being. And then behind my back, somehow, Robbie got the bar out. So now we have this, which is nice and clean. The Teflon sleeves are fine. And I just put back the, the gearage on with the, what do you call them, expanding pins in. It had some Allen things, but originally they're, they're some originally Allen they're damaged, keys. but I'm almost wondering if we should just drill and tap some new. We're gonna just put one bolt. He wanted to drill out these holes wider to add lubrication in the future. Oh yeah, maximum lubrication available now. Oh yeah, now 
of the oil is going to go in. So this is part of the wind vane that we really, really want to spin freely. That's yes. why it's got a loop system. And it was completely seized. And now, just by removing the pipe, it's like... Robbie also made some new plastic bushings to bring the gears up a little closer together. Two of mine. It was just a matter of puzzle piecing everything back together. And now movement of the whole wind vane was much smoother. Yeah, I think that's, that'll do it. It's not too tight. No, I think it needs to go one tooth more that way. Sorry, sorry. Of course, we used a little grease to get everything fitting smoothly back together. Let's see. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Adjust. Another day, another storm. Sending in the cockpit caused such a disaster. We both didn't sleep for a week because of all the dust blowing right back into the interior of the boat. It was not like that once in the boatyard, so I scoured the island and found a painting suit. The suit lasted three sessions of sanding on the beach, but for those three sessions, millimeter by millimeter, I brought down the thickness of the fiberglass sleeves without an itch. Soon after the suit split, starting in the crotch of course, and I was on my own using basic sailing know-how to keep strictly upwind of the dust. Another evening, another squall, and another beautiful sunset here on the Isle of Women. These are going to be permanently glassed on as they're going to become one with fiberglass they're because cracking. they're this cracking. This is cracking so bad. This entire structure would need to be just recast. We've seen a, one YouTube channel kind of recasting a part of it. I've seen that guy Did doing... this just grow this crack here as well? This one has a crack basically going inside. This thing is almost completely separated from, from both sides. This has to be fiberglass around here. And I don't know how we're going to fiberglass this and this together. It'll be interesting to fiberglass. I don't know how we're going to. We really, really, really want to head to Florida. And actually the wind vane is one of those things supposed to help us to get to Florida, but we've been struggling with the idea of heading to Florida because it's a very particular year when it comes to hurricanes. We have the El Nino who moved uh, east along the Pacific Ocean, which technically means, which is good for us, which means the hurricanes are supposedly going to be few and far apart because of that. But on the other hand, it's been in the hottest year on the planet. So what fuels a hurricane is, is the warmth of the water. And this year being the hottest on the planet for the last month, the water in the Atlantic has been at record high levels. 
So what experts are saying is that because of El Nino, there's a, there's a much lower chance of getting a hurricane mm. this year. But if we do get one, it's going to be a monster. So it, it's not that things I like to hear. I'll have more smaller ones that are more manageable than getting a Category 5 or a so-called 6, which doesn't exist. Yeah. But uh, like Irma, which destroyed the, the St. Martin where my family lives, and I still hear stories about it. And when they're supercharged and very strong, they tend to head north to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> so we've been we've kind of we been delaying a Florida run. Not sure if we want to go put ourselves in the middle of a path of a, of a super hurricane if it if and when happens. But you know how it is. You know we stay here and then we just, we don't see a hurricane all year. We get to Florida and we get hit. So we kind of like. We're very teetering. We're very teetering. So yeah, we are. We kind of like on on a nice edge with this whole hurricane season thing. Mm. We're very lucky. We haven't had a single one this year yet. But I have the feeling that any moment we can have a, a mega one bearing down on us. So we are on constant high alert to be kind of always be ready to, to make a run either south or either north. Because the hiding spots in Florida, you have to go way up rivers and canals and. Uh, but that means putting down our mast and several mm -hmm. things. It's it's not the easiest option for us. So we're still on, on a knife's edge here waiting for that. That's all folks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs>